Lovely people, there are two enemies standing between you and your salad. If you want fresh, crispy lettuce, then one, don't buy lettuce that's pre-chopped. Those cuts open the leaves up to oxygen, and that means bye-bye green, hello brown, and no one wants a brown salad. Two, don't wash your lettuce. Once moisture penetrates the leaf, it's limp city, and no one wants a limp salad. What are you doing? You can't tell them not to wash their lettuce. You yourself have reported on E. coli outbreaks in the New York Times. It's always the lettuce. I was about to say that there is one kind of lettuce that you can get away with never washing, one that's grown indoors and its leaves never touch soil or water. Never touch soil or water. Where, pray tell, is this mythical lettuce from? I'm glad you asked. Let's roll the intro. So even if your lettuce says triple washed, health and safety experts still recommend you wash your lettuce. And that's because contaminated irrigation water is often the vector for nasty bacteria like E. coli. And because lettuce leaves are bumpy and they have pores, it's really difficult to get the bacteria off contaminated lettuce. So what's the alternative? lettuce grown in a controlled environment. Now you might say, Nicole, I saw your hydroponic spinach episode and there were plants floating in water. Well, lovely people, I'm glad you've done your homework, but that was five years ago. Five years ago. Right now, we're about to step into the future. This is Little Leaf Farms, a 10-acre greenhouse complex in Massachusetts. The mission here is to get locally grown greens to grocery stores within 24 hours. This is radical because 98% of the lettuce we eat in the US is grown in just two states, California and Arizona, which means if you live in New England, your lettuce has traveled over 3,000 miles to get to your local grocery. This gargantuan greenhouse pumps out 22 million packages of lettuce a year. And it does it, everything from seed to harvest, without a single human hand ever touching the lettuce. This is next level automated farming. This is data driven farming that says, let's analyze all the conditions for growing perfect baby greens. And then let's execute those conditions with pinpoint precision. In other words, they take away all the stresses that these plants would encounter in life outdoors. Bad weather, poor nutrition, pathogens, pests, and instead give the plants only what they want. The perfect balance of nutrients, the right spectrum of light, the right amount of CO2. The people here have even figured out what the perfect breeze consists of. How strong, how warm, how cold, how humid, you get my drift. The man in charge of orchestrating this whole operation is Peter Slaman, whose last name literally means lettuce man. Peter is a fourth generation lettuce grower who helped pioneer the Netherlands famed greenhouse industry. He's got the swagger of someone who's been able to increase yields at Little Leaf by a whopping 20% each year. But somewhere beneath the tattoos, he also has the mindfulness of a farmer who's always learning. Because it's still feeling, it's still what the plant feels is important. That's interesting because like you are, you're working with a living thing. Yeah. You can't control, entirely control what a living thing does. Never. But I guess for you, you're probably humbled all the time by what the... Uh, that's a difficult word for me, but... <laughs> 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 uh, just be honest. But you know, indoor is always easier than, than, you know, a field grower that just have to walk with, watch to the sky and yes. pray if, yes. the, if the weather gets better. And that's, I'm really happy that that's, I am not that kind of grower. Exactly. I still pray, but you know, it's, I actually can, I can control it. Now the old definition of hydroponics meant plants grown in water, but today hydroponics just means plants grown in controlled soilless environments. 
I know what you're thinking. This looks like soil, but it's not. It's a substrate. Think a pillow for the baby plants to snuggle into. A pillow made from peat moss and woody bits, but not soil. What's the difference? Soil is literally alive with millions of microorganisms. Peat moss, on the other hand, is something long dead. It's made of bog plants that have slowly decomposed, often over thousands of years. It's got no nutrition for the plants, and that's exactly what Little Leaf wants. Because remember, they control exactly what nutrients their plants get. All they need is a cradle, a structure, for the developing plant. Let me show you how this all works. The plants are grown in these specialized gutters with small irrigation channels that carry the dissolved nutrients directly to the plant's roots. It's called an NFT system. No, not that NFT. This is nutrient film technique. A thin film of fertilized water nourishes the roots. So the gutters are filled with the peat moss mix and a machine plants the seeds. Since these seeds don't need light to germinate, they start their life on the lower level of the greenhouse. Four days later, once they've grown a taproot and the first pair of baby cotyledon leaves, they take the elevator up into the sunlight. Well, on a day like today, their sunlight is mostly a mixture of LEDs and high pressure sodium lights. Guys, it's been bucketing down all day. In fact, it's been raining for two days straight. And yet this lettuce is all nice and tucked and dry and toasty. Well, the rainwater is being caught on the roof and will be used in the whole system. Speaking of rain, the water that irrigates the plants is mostly captured rainwater that they UV sterilize and recirculate through the greenhouse after being filtered. This recirculating system means these 10 acres are using 90% less water than traditional field-grown greens. And in these days of extreme droughts in California, that's significant. But what about energy consumption? It's one of the key criticisms leveled against greenhouse farming. So I asked Tim, one of Little Leaf's co-founders. Do we use energy during the winter? Sure, you know, the days are shorter, but then you take a look at it over the course of the year, about how much lettuce we're actually producing on a daily basis, and you multiply it over 365 days a year, it becomes pretty efficient. And then if you take into account also the lack of miles that you're putting onto the transportation, how quick you're getting to the store, those all add up into it as opposed to just looking at what an electric bill is. Little Leaf doesn't spray their lettuce with any pesticides. So their first line of defense is a plant barrier outdoors around the greenhouse that attracts pollinators and beneficial insects. The greenhouse vents all have microscreens. There's fly tape too, lots of it. And when necessary, their in-house bug specialist introduces beneficial insects like ladybugs to go after aphids or whatever the pest may be. It takes three weeks from seed to harvest. The moment each gutter hits its peak weight, the automated system triggers that gutter to move out of the greenhouse. Each gutter is shuttled into a production area that's set at a chilly 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty nippy for Mark, but it sure keeps the lettuce fresh. The gutters go through a cutter, and the leaves are delivered to a hopper where they're weighed. The lettuce drops into clamshells that will be delivered to the grocery store within 24 hours. Okay, so let's talk about flavor and nutrition. The green leaf that grows here is basically a cross between iceberg and romaine. It's a variety that does particularly well in this kind of greenhouse environment. So is it a kind of lettuce that is packed with complexity and heirloom flavor? No, that's not what it's meant to be. This lettuce is meant to satisfy the majority of lettuce eaters in the country who are looking for sweet, crunchy, and refreshing greens. Are we missing something when we grow lettuce without soil? Well, we can fly to the moon and back, but honestly, we just don't know enough about our soil here on Earth to say. What we do know is that hydroponic lettuce has improved in recent years so that this lettuce is nutritionally on par with its outdoor counterpart, the romaines and icebergs coming out of California. Only, of course, this lettuce, if you're finding it in your grocery store, is a lot fresher and will last you a lot longer. 
If you get it home within nine to 10 days of the use date, it'll probably stay another nine to 10 days past the use by date. What Little Leaf is doing is solving a very specific problem. It's serving fresh greens to a part of the country that can't otherwise grow them year round. And that is powerful because it means that greenhouses like this one are able to offer a new approach to regional farming that can be scaled up. It's just one piece in a big puzzle as American agriculture looks to cut its dependency on food grown thousands of miles away, one serving of salad at a time.